In this presentation, I'll be talking about the Andragogical Instructor. On the screen in front of you, you can see a chain uh, link, three chains there. On the left side, it has a, a link that I've labeled content. On the right side, uh, side, a link that I've labeled class. And of course, that middle link is the key piece. According to Bruce Wilkinson, the teacher is the living link between the content and the class. I like that a lot. Bellman believes there's more to teaching than simply standing in front of a group of people and spewing out a lot of information. That there has to be something that connects that information to learning within the individual. To achieve this link, there has to be a union between the, the attitude of the instructor and the delivery of the content in such a way that learning takes place. That in such a way is the essence of andragogical instruction. Andragogy is a term coined by Malcolm Knowles describing a pedagogy for adults with the understanding that adults learn differently than young people due to their life experiences. And so the andragogical teacher understands that their role in the process, their link, if you will, in this uh, in this experience is to be able to create an environment of learning that connects the content with the class. There are three attitudinal qualities that define andragogical teachers according to the adult learner. The first one is that they are real or genuine. And I like this. I, I think sometimes we see instructors go in and have to put on that pose or that persona of of being the wise and all-knowing sage. Uh, but f if you're going to be truly engaged in learning, and if you're going to have the ability to be an andragogical teacher, you're going to be someone who is real and genuine. You're going to express that genuineness in the classroom, and you're going to express that, that sense of, of realness in everything you do, as if you also understand that you are involved in the process of learning along with the students in your class. The second part of it is non-possessive caring, prizing trust and respect. The andragogical teacher sees their class, their charges, those who are a part of their responsibility in the learning process as individuals, real people, people that deserve respect, uh, people that value trust and are willing to share trust back and forth. Uh, they are not so concerned about caring of their own psyche and their own authority that they're unwilling to engage in a learning process that can be mutually beneficial, but also sometimes uh, chaotic. And the third attitudinal quality here is emphatic understanding and sensitive and accurate listening. The ability to engage others as if they have something to contribute to the conversation. Not just to tell them what they need to know, but to open, be open to the fact that they already may know something which will contribute positively to the experience. So these three attitudinal qualities are foundational to, to the andragogical teacher and foundational to that creating that link that will bring together that combined effort of content and class to create this student-focused learning that we're looking for. Questions that the andragogical teacher asks uh, are listed here and I'm going to go through them one by one since I, I believe that they're so important and so often unasked, surprisingly, uh, are there materials that will increase a student's desire to learn? And if so, what are those? So if I'm looking at the material that I'm going to be teaching this evening in, a, in my class, I'm going to be looking at that saying, okay, I've got the faculty guide here, I've got the textbook, and I see what it says that I'm going to be learning, but I wonder what other materials are there that might increase a student's desire to learn 
this specific topic in this specific way? And if so, what might they be? Is there an article that I need to bring in? Is there um, an experience or a, a YouTube video? What other materials would increase a student's desire to learn this particular thing that I'm going to be doing? And then how is the second question, how can I as a teacher enhance a student's will to learn? And to do that, I have to think about why the students would even want to learn what it is that is the subject or the topic for that particular evening or that portion of the evening for that evening. Why would they want to learn it? And then how can I as a teacher enhance their will to learn it? This might mean contextualizing it in a sense so that it becomes relevant. And I think that might be a key word in this particular thing. How can I not just take the faculty guide and the learning activity that is, exists, but how can I take that and bring it into a framework that will affect the student's will to learn? Everybody is motivated primarily by what they perceive, it, how it will perce they perceive it will impact them or their loved ones. That, that's true almost universally. So what is it that I will do as a teacher in this session that will impact my students' will to learn that particular topic? We know as instructors that one of the things that we want to accomplish is to see that light come on in our students' eyes, to know that they have, uh, if you will, got it. And what is it that we need to do that will help them make that leap to come into a place where they want to do that. Third question, what is the most effective method of presentation for this material? Too often we default back to the way we ourselves were taught and we were taught, almost all of us, by the method of lecture and yet that method is actually uh, antithetical to what we are hoping to achieve in an andragogical experience. It's much, much broader than that. And so what would that learning take place? Maybe it's going to be a short video. Maybe it's going to be the presentation of, of uh, a short, if you will, um, dialogue in the classroom or a brainstorming activity or a, a pair and share. And uh, listed in with this class, there are a, a list of collaborative teaching activities that you might be able to bring into the classroom to facilitate learning, but what is the most effective method of presentation? And sometimes this, this requires nothing more than sitting back and thinking, okay, what would it take for this to happen? Sometimes you might say, you know, the most effective method for this to happen is for us to go and, and uh, stand and look out the window at the traffic patterns and see how that affects a particular thing. And don't be afraid to try something new, and if it fails, try something new again the next time. But think about different methods, things that would literally be out of the box. Andragogical teachers don't default to lecture. And if all you're defaulting back to is lecture, then your ability to create that link between content and your class, between learning and your student, is probably nearly flat. Uh, probably non-existent. Lecture is probably not the most effective way to teach adults because they bring different information in that will allow them, if you are creative, to be able to make creative links for themselves. And then the last one here, what is the optimal presentation sequence? I know you've got a faculty guide that lists a presentation sequence, but we also trust that you have experience and education. And as you look at the sequence of things that are to be covered that particular evening, you may know in your mind that there may need to be a shifting of that sequence for optimal learning to take place. If you determine that that's the case, then re-optimize the presentation sequence so that learning takes place. Andragogical teachers are not fixated on the faculty guide per se. And of course, we want you to stay with the faculty guide, but they are fixated on the learning objectives that are presented for that particular topic in that particular class session. 
And their, their focus then is to how can we make that happen? So that's the question. How can we make that happen? And that takes us to the key tool of the andragogical instructor, the collaborative learning strategy. I love the collaborative learning strategy, CLS. What is a collaborative learning strategy? First, be familiar with the course materials, including the texts, assignments, and faculty guide. I have heard, to me, horror stories of individuals who have picked up their faculty guide, not having read the textbook, picked up their faculty guide literally on the way into the class and expected to be able to teach the class simply because they've taught other classes and they assume that they are so competent that they don't need anybody else's help, nor do they need to be familiar with the material. Well, I'm going to tell you this. If you're going to be truly uh, effective, you need to be familiar with the material yourself and thoroughly familiar. Second point, know the irreducible minimum of each topic to be covered. If I have four topics tonight that have to be covered, and these are topics that are within my sphere of teaching knowledge, I've been qualified to teach these, knowledge, these subjects, and I have experience not only in teaching them, but I have experience in doing them. I'm going to know, as I look over this subject, what is the irreducible minimum. And that is, when I say irreducible minimum, what I'm using is, is a reference from Bruce Wilkinson's uh, Seven Laws of the Learner, which simply says, what is it that has to be learned if the student is going to come away having uh, satisfied the knowledge necessary or the learning necessary to uh, have met that outcome. Now, there are a lot of things you can teach about a specific subject, but what is that one or two things that have to be learned? And then as time allows, can you build on that and add the other parts to that framework? Uh, you, you're going to have to have the bones if you're going to have the body stand up. But once you get the bones in place, then you can begin to add other pieces and flesh. But if you start with the flesh, and I've heard, I've heard so many instructors, my goodness, they pounded on flesh after flesh after flesh, but they didn't put the bones in place first. And by the time they got ready to put the bones in, time had run out, and they had missed their irreducible minimum by putting in all kinds of really good information, but not that which had to be learned first. Second question, have you asked the questions that andragogical teachers asked? This is the previous slide. Have you gone over those very things that we just talked about? Do you know, uh, are there other materials that will increase learning? How can I increase the student's will to learn? What is the most effective method of presentation? And what is the optimal sequence? You see, I'm going to need to ask those questions and ask them repeatedly until they become so ingrained in my mind that I think first of student learning and second of, of the thoroughness of the content. And then how can student learning be identified? This is an assessment piece. How, how will I know if student learning has been identified, learning has been achieved? How will I know that that has happened? Well, I'm going to need to have that in my mind because as I'm teaching the students, I'm going to want to have some awareness. Maybe I want uh, them to do some dialogue in the class. Maybe I need them to, to do some paraphrasing back to me. Maybe they need to do some role playing. Maybe there needs to be a presentation based off of the information, maybe a, a brief quiz. Um, and, and then I also want to construct experiences and activities that will achieve the learning that I've just identified. So if I've identified that learning, here's what I want them to know. I've got my all of these things done, and here's what I want them to know. Now I'm going to construct my activities. Um, it, it may be a variety of different activities. It could be uh, videos, lectures, uh, PowerPoints, discussion, dialogue, and again, consult that collaborative learning page that's a part of this lesson. You're going to want to look at that and see what you can implement. But I'm going to construct experiences that I believe will contribute to learning. And then at the end, I'm going to assess that learning so that I can figure out where I may need to go back and refocus a little bit. Grading or assessment is never about only about evaluation. It should always include instruction. Assessment is always about 
reassessing so that I can refocus my learning so that, so that the student learning actually takes place. Andragogical instruction is not, it's not pure lecture. Uh, I see too much of that in adult classrooms and honestly there should be very little of that in adult classrooms. It's not tests and quizzes, although there will be to opportunities for tests and quizzes, just like there's going to be opportunities for lecture. But any lecture that surpasses um, 20 to 30 minutes tops has already hit a wall in the minds of the students. And the same thing with quizzes and tests. Quizzes and tests uh, can be used as an assessment for where learning has taken place and where we can refocus learning. But if you depend too heavily upon that, all it does is reinforce a short-term learning mode. Um, if you're familiar with Bloom's taxonomy, and I encourage you to, to become familiar with that, it merely reinforces the lowest levels of learning most of the time. And we're looking at something for something much higher than that so that they're able to synthesize and recreate the information in, in ways that will impact and be able to be uniquely used. And it's not merely collaborative exercises. If you think I'm promoting only collaborative exercises, that would be a mistake. If you're going to use a collaborative exercise, it needs to have clearly defined objectives and learning expectations. I've seen some instructors just go overboard with activity after activity, and the students love it. Oh, my goodness, they're just excited, excited. But they don't come away having learned anything because the instructor is not taking the time to define the objectives and the learning expectations, and then how has that been met with that particular activity. So andragogical instruction is not anything. It's kind of everything because it is a focus on student learning. That's the key piece. Student learning is the focus of the andragogical instructor. And so we come back to this, this chain link, if you will, showing the content on one side, the class in the, mother, in the other, the andragogical instructor who, by use of the CLS, is able to create that link. It hinges upon the effectiveness of the instructor who is willing to perceive themselves in a new light, in a light that is so focused upon achieving learning. Well, thank you for your time. If you have questions related to this presentation, please contact your dean. And thank you.